Hey everyone, and welcome back. Uh, today I want to do a teardown. I've got this um, engine start stop button, probably from a Civic. I'm not 100% sure what car this came out of, but um, it was defective for one reason or another. Uh, in case you didn't know, um, there's a lot of immobilizer technology in here, like um, uh, uh, basically stuff that stops your car from starting if you've got the wrong key in the car. So that's why there's more than just the two pins that a typical button will be used for. Uh, now the goal of this is just to show you around a little bit, uh, take a look what it looks like inside. And also if we can salvage the push button part, that would be ideal. No guarantees. I'm also gonna try to keep this in focus, but you know, it's really hard. Um, I need a lot more light to shoot at a way smaller aperture. Anyways, that's just nerd stuff. Um, let's start by taking this chrome off. Haven't been in here yet. So I don't know how easy it's going to be to open this thing up. Oh, well, that part went pretty easy. So there's just these little hooks. And I'll show you these things once I'm, once I'm through with them. Come on. There we go. Okay. So let me show you the little hooks. So if you can see those little hooks in there, there's the button itself, and those little hooks hook into those openings there. You can see right through them. Okay, so that's out of the way. Are we any closer? No, not really. Let's go on the other end here. I got a whole bunch of uh, spudgers at the beginning of this. So this side moved. Oh, see, it seems to come out. Same sort of deal here. With those little clips and holes. Oh, I don't, I don't really want to break it if I don't have to. May just have to though. Oh, I heard a click. Don't know if I broke something. There we go. So that's out and we've got some circuitry now. Oh, looks like we can pop it out maybe. Okay. All right. Well, the button portion is just in there. Seems to be locked in this little, see that? Seems to be something locking it in there. And then it pushes on these two gold contacts that kind of flatten, like sort of push onto this circuit board. You see that there's a, two clear windows here. And it looks like there's two LEDs on here. And it looks like there might be, well, there's still a wire going up to there. So I know that these things have an antenna on them because when your fob battery dies, you're supposed to put your key fob on this and push. So we're gonna have to find a way to get this apart. But first, let's take a look at this board. I'm going to try my best to keep this in focus here, but uh, yeah, it's very tiny and I've got a very tiny screen to look at. Uh, first things first, this is the back side. Here are the contacts where the button actually presses, and that is with this uh, rubber membrane here with the uh, two sort of uh, gold plated contacts there. And there are two windows here, and these two windows correspond to where these two LEDs sit. Now I can light this one. There we go, that's a green LED there. 
So that's just a little uh, at the top of the start stop button. Um, but this one, I think it's might be a three volt or more type deal LED. So I cannot light it, but this would be the backlighting. This would light up the lettering on the uh, on the button itself. So on top of that, on this back side here, we have a small signal transistor, an NMOS. Um, this is a BSP149 uh, capable of, uh, you know, maybe a, a couple amps at very max. Um, I cannot tell what it's feeding, but it might be doing some sort of signaling. I'm not sure. It's fairly big too. It's very chunky. I don't think it runs this LED per se, so I'm not sure what that's doing there. On the other side, now here's something I find really cool. Um, they just used a row of pin headers that are surface mount, and the casing of the switch itself and those two together make up the plug connector. So you see the little grooves up top here? That's where the plug will go and click in. And so really, it's just as simple as some pin headers. They're not standard 0.1 inch, but still, uh, that's pretty ingenious. Now on this side, we've got a couple of big caps like that. We've got a bunch of passives. Then we've got two active devices. So you've got this guy here, which is a regulator, BD. 3574 it's an LDO linear regulator specifically meant for automotive body control so this is a 5 volt linear regulator and then up here you have an NXP PCF 9918T which is a specific microcontroller for immobilizers for for security systems so this is specific to that I couldn't find a detailed data sheet on this uh, probably for a good reason but um, yeah it is what it is and there's the little plug that leads to the front of the switch so we need to switch to lower magnification and see if we can dig into that switch any deeper before we switch many magnifications um, I think I figured out where we need to go you're looking at the inside of the switch here you see the greased rails over here. That's a greased rail there. And there's another greased rail over here. And if I push the button, see it runs up and down on those rails. I apologize about the focus. Um, and these things here, they're clips. So we just need to unclip four of these and push the button through. There we go, maybe you can see them better now. Well, that was not fun. I've got all four of them down. I can push it out. It's really an optimized design for assembly, not disassembly, which makes sense. It's an auto manufacturer. They're not supposed to be disassembled. It's supposed to be replaced as a whole component. So up here, you should be able to see now, there's the little clips. One, two, three, four. There's the two greased rails that hold this in orientation and also lets it slide. I guess I can hold it up here. Uh, here you have, there's a light pipe. So this was the green LED I was telling you about. So there's a light pipe here and there's just a regular pipe there, just a tunnel for the white LED, which will light up the, the writing here. So what's next? I'm sure there's gonna be another way to disassemble this. Ah, here we go. So we got some more hooks got them all loose now again that wasn't very fun uh, here we go I'm gonna slide this apart trying to keep this in focus I hope you understand this is not as easy as it seems not sure you can definitely see the coil of wire now but I'm not sure why this top isn't coming off so have to do those clips have to come off does this unclip because I thought they were part of each other what if I poke down like this hmm 
I might destroy this might be a one-way trip um, because like the the coil is part of this piece so I'm not sure why this piece the outer piece isn't coming out just having a quick look see because these metal tabs these guys here they are part of this back piece so they should come all together oh no seems like it's stuck down here I don't know there we go so out it came this is another housing piece this is the like the sliding button part now there's a light pipe there we go that's the LED light pipe for the green oh and here is the coil so here is the exciter coil so this is what actually reads your key now this coil is only here in case your key battery dies because normally there are antennas in the car um, probably I think we use five at Honda and uh, when your fob battery dies you can put it up against the push button here as you can see it was way up in the front there and this will uh, send out a pulse and that pulse will power a passive chip on the on your fob just for long enough for it to send a pulse back and verify that it is the proper key so yeah that's the little inductive coil that does that with the little plug nothing too much to see here you can tell that there is a, a diffuser so that white piece in there that diffuses the lettering I'm not sure if I can put a flashlight up to it so here's my cell phone there we go can you see that engine start stop so that's just a little diffusion for that and yeah that's just about it all the parts of this engine start stop button there it is in the base parts um, so it seems like I could reuse the button here uh, only if I design like a PCB for PCB way or something and uh, have these things just get pushed onto my PCB and then I can uh, you know I can even put pin headers to you know out this plug to use that as a plug but that'll be only used for this specific device um, could also solder some wires couldn't it could just you know what it could just solder some wires from the traces out to some of these pins and um, and then accept it like that so maybe I'll do that in a future video yeah if you want me to hack this into a button without having to order any parts let me know in the comments below and if you have any other questions about how this works and how it came apart also let me know in the comments below I will keep this debris for a little bit until I decide what to do with it and then you know it's probably gonna end up in the trash if I don't reuse it so yeah Hope you like this little teardown. Thanks for watching.